Welcome, this is part two of the multi-part series on building a web presence. Last time we found the domain name nature.com for selling simple minimal t-shirts, evaluated our competition, and picked out some target keywords. In this video, we're gonna be covering choosing a hosting company, setting up your web server, and then familiarizing yourself with it by connecting to the server over SSH. But before we get started, let me give you some insight on the technology I'll be using. I'll be running my storefront on WordPress paired with the WooCommerce plugin. Both WordPress and WooCommerce are free and open source, which keeps costs down. And they also run on the programming language PHP and then use MySQL as the database. So I'm gonna need both of those installed on my web server as well. Since PHP and MySQL work really well with Linux, I'll be using Ubuntu as my operating system. Now Ubuntu is also open source, which again, keeps costs down as there's no license to pay for when we're running the operating system. And for that reason, I'll be using the DigitalOcean $5 per month virtualized server in order to set up nature.com. And when renting a virtualized server, even if you're sharing it with other people, because the virtualization technology is improved, you'll be given a certain amount of RAM and hard disk space as a guarantee. And you can scale that amount of RAM and hard disk space depending on how memory intensive your application is. And you'd be really surprised at how much you can squeeze out of even the lowest tier offering on DigitalOcean, for example, I'm currently running a custom Laravel application and a WordPress site on a DigitalOcean $5 per month server that gets a combined 50,000 hits per month. And that's because generally it takes really small amount of computer processing power in order to serve up web content, even if you have a lot of users. The biggest issue you're gonna run into is running out of RAM, which can happen either due to large applications or inefficient unindexed queries. And if you wanna give DigitalOcean a try after watching this video, I put a referral link in the description below that will not only help you support this channel, but also you'll get $10 in credit, which is worth two months of free hosting. Now, even if you're not comfortable enough with server management to host your site on an unmanaged server, for $5 a month, I'd recommend setting one up anyway, just to get experience connecting to servers and using the command line and working with Linux generally. And honestly, you can't screw things up. You can't mess it up. No matter how bad you screw it up because it's a virtualized server, all you have to do, go into the DigitalOcean dashboard, click a button and reset it and you'll have a brand new server that you can keep on learning on. Plus the DigitalOcean community has tons of really great how-to articles covering pretty much everything that you could ever want to do. For example, configuring your firewall settings, setting up HTTPS, installing Node.js, logging web traffic, and on and on and on. And if you can't for some reason find a solution to your problem, then there's also a forum where you can ask questions. So let's go ahead and set up our Neat Shirt server. Once you log into your DigitalOcean account, you're taken to your account dashboard and you click on create droplet in order to set up a new server. The first thing you need to enter is your droplet host name. This will be the local host name on your Linux server only, so you can pretty much use whatever you want, but for simplicity, I'll use neatshirt.com. Then I'll select the $5 per month, 512 megabytes of RAM option. Scrolling down, I'll select the San Francisco region since I'm on the West Coast. This is the data center where the physical machine will be hosted. Generally, you wanna be as close to your users as possible and this will give you the lowest latency. Next, I'll check enable backups. This costs 20% more, or in the case of this lowest tier, an extra dollar per month, but it will create a backup image and if anything goes wrong, you can restore your server from, a ba from that backup image. Next, we'll select an image to create the server from. A virtual machine's image is just like a snapshot of the entire operating system at a certain point in time. And so you can select a few different flavors of Linux, or you can load an image with an application already installed, for example, Drupal or Ruby on Rails or WordPress. And since, as I mentioned, I'll be using WordPress for neatshirt.com, let's go ahead and select that option. The last option is to add an SSH key. And let's leave this off for now, and I'll show you how to set up SSH keys in a later video where I'll cover securing your web server. And since we're not using an SSH key, the password to the web server will be emailed to you once the droplet setup is created. So let's go ahead and create the droplet and in around 30 seconds, the server will be ready. You can see up at the top that the server has been assigned an IP address of 104.236.132.132. So let's go ahead and put that into our web browser and you can see that we're redirected to the WordPress admin installation page. However, it's password protected by an Apache HT access file. As a side note, Apache is the name of the web server software that's running on our DigitalOcean droplet. It's a software that actually listens to the incoming HTTP requests and directs them to the WordPress PHP files. So unless we're entering the correct password, Apache won't let this HTTP request pass through. So to get this password, we need to log into our server and our server is running a copy of Secure Shell or SSH, which allows us to connect remotely to the server's operating system. Because the server isn't running a graphical shell, we'll be using the command line to configure the machine. Specifically, because the machine is running on Ubuntu Linux, we'll be working with the bash shell. Now, using a terminal can be intimidating at first if you're used to using graphical user interfaces. However, if you're serious about learning any kind of programming or server administration, it's something you're gonna need to at least be familiar with. And once you've gained proficiency using the command line, you'll actually find that you're more efficient than when you were 
pointing, clicking, dragging, and dropping. Okay, so connecting to the server. If you're on a Windows machine, you'll need to use an SSH client. I prefer Putty, which is freeware, so if you don't already have it installed, you can find a link to download it in the description below. Once it's installed, open it up, enter the IP address that your server was assigned, and click open. In my case, it was 104.236.132.132. Leave the port as 22, which is the default port for SSH connections, and then click open. When prompted for your username and password, put in root, and then the password that was emailed to you when the server was created. Note that the first time you log in, you're gonna be prompted to change the password. Just make sure that you remember what password you enter. However, if for some reason you forget, you can reset the root password in the DigitalOcean control panel. If you're on a Mac or Linux machine, simply open up a terminal and type in SSH root, which is your username, at the IP address of your server, 104.236.132.132. Hit enter, and again, when prompted for your password, put in the password that DigitalOcean emailed you. Now that we're connected to the server, you can see the welcome screen it contains the HD access username and password that we were looking for. But before we head back to the browser to finish our WordPress install, let's take a quick look around the server. And because we logged in at root, we start out in the slash root directory by default. If you ever wanna see what directory you're in, simply type PWD. And if we type LL and hit enter, it's a shortcut we can list the contents of our current folder. Since this WordPress requires MySQL to run, the DigitalOcean image comes with MySQL already configured. A default password has been set in case you need it for later. It's here in your root folder under the .my.cnf file. To view the context of a file in Linux, simply type cat and then the name of the file, and you can see that these are the default MySQL credentials for the server. So if you wanna log into the MySQL command line, simply type MySQL and then U for user root. And now we're logged into the MySQL command line application. Note that we didn't have to enter a password because the system is configured to automatically use the config file that I just showed you. From a MySQL command line, we can run queries on the database. For example, to see the databases, type show databases, and you can see that WordPress database is already set up. If we type use WordPress and then show tables, we can see the standard WordPress installation tables are already installed. To exit the MySQL command line, simply type exit and you'll be taken back to the server's bash shell. So moving on from MySQL, I mentioned earlier that the web server software this image uses is Apache. I'll be showing you how to configure different Apache options in later videos, but for now, just note that it's located under the etc slash Apache2 folder. And if we CD or change directory over there, we can see that the Apache2 conf file, which contains the main settings. Finally, let's take a look at the default WordPress directory. If we change the directory over to slash var slash www, and you can see that the files from a default WordPress installation are contained inside. And if we check out the wp-config.php file by using the cat command, you can see that our database credentials are already entered. So it's nice, all of that's been set up for you by DigitalOcean. Now that we've checked out the server a bit, let's go back to the web browser and finalize that WordPress installation. We'll take the username and password from the server welcome message, enter it into your web browser, and then go through the usual WordPress setup. We'll enter each shirt as a site title, put in the username for logging in as admin, enter a corresponding password, and then click on install WordPress. As I showed you before, the MySQL username and password are already set during the droplet creation process, so WordPress doesn't ask for one during the installation process. Click login and enter the WordPress username and password that we just sent, and then boom, we're in the WordPress admin running our web server. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Next time, we're gonna connect the domain neatshirt.com to the web server that we just set up, and then we're gonna set up a Google Apps account in order to send and receive email at ben at neatshirt.com. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or drop me a line on Twitter at Ben Beerstrom. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.